Hi everyone, it's Monica and let's talk about some thrillers and murder mysteries to get into that Halloween spirit. I really do love this time of year. It's the perfect time to read and curl up with a thriller or a murder mystery and let's just get right to the first book, which is Our Good Girls Got to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is a YA murder mystery trilogy. I absolutely loved it. It has elements of a murder mystery and action. Set in a small fictional town, Little Kilton, in England, we are following Pippa, who is currently doing her final project of her senior year. And Pippa, she chooses to do her final project on a local murder mystery case that has been closed about a girl, Andy Bell, who was supposedly murdered by Sal Singh. And this case happened five years ago, and this case is close to home for Pip because it happened in her town, and everyone in her town believes that Sal has killed Andy. But soon Pip finds out that her small town has many mysteries and many cover-ups and someone from the past wants those secrets to stay hidden. There's so many twists and turns in this series and I love following Pip. She's very smart and capable like a detective and she's really great at uncovering clues. In this first book, Pip realizes that she's on the trail of something big and the revelation of that truth follows her throughout the series. We also have Ravi Singh who is Sal's younger brother and he helps with Pip's investigation because um, he doesn't believe that his older brother committed murder. And I really enjoyed their dynamic throughout the series as well. One unique thing about this book series is that Pip herself, she creates a podcast, a true crime podcast, following her investigation and she gains quite an audience. And throughout the prose in this book, there are little like small case files and documents. Feels like you're solving the murder mystery case along with Pip. The writing style is quite easy to read and if you pay really close attention, there are little details that have a huge impact later on in the book and within the series. All the books in this trilogy are amazing and I really, really loved it and I'm sure you will too. And my next pick is an adult thriller. It is Take Your Breath Away by Linwood Barclay. This one follows Andrew, whose wife mysteriously vanishes after he returns home from a fishing trip. And six years later, his missing wife, Bree, shows up in town and has no memory of what happened to her. The police suspect that Andrew has something to do with this and his current partner, Jane, doesn't know about his past, but the real question is, is Brie really back? So this other was quite well paced and it gives you enough hints throughout the book to follow along and make your own predictions about what has happened to Brie and if Andrew, our main character, is part of that missing case. There was a lot of guesswork that I was surprisingly quite good at predicting and I was right, but not every element in this book is predictable because I was really thrown off by the surprise ending and I really love being surprised in thrillers and the reasons behind this entire mystery is not what you would expect. There are sometimes some convenient chain of events but the unexpected twists will keep you surprised and glued to the page. Next up is a YA thriller slash mystery and this is Ace of Spades by Farida Abikidime and this one is set place at a private academy and we're following two top students, Chiyamaka and Devon. These two students that we're following, they get some of their most deepest darkest secrets blasted out to their entire school. And the person who's behind these mysterious texts is known as Isis, which threatens our main character's future that they work so hard for. So this one is a really thrilling YA mystery and an excellent debut. While Aces is only mainly targeting the two black students in the school, that comes with a lot of important topics of institutionalized racism, white supremacy, colonialism, and really severe bullying. But there is also fantastic LGBTQ rap and POC rap. However, once Chiamaka and Devon learn that the target harassment is towards them, they both are denying that it is of anything deeper. But soon they completely understand what is going on and they're just appalled and they stand up and fight back against their bullies. And both of these characters are resilient in their own ways. Chiamaka is one who is quite candid and she's not one to back down. Devon is quite soft-hearted and shares his emotions openly, but he's still quite determined to get justice for himself and Chiamaka. 
Both of these characters are very, very strong and they gather the courage to stand up for themselves and get the justice that they deserve. So this is definitely a book you want to pick up if you want an intense mystery as well as underlying important messages. And my next recommendation is The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. I really appreciated the different tone that this book took on, which was a lot more horror. So this book follows two characters and through two different timelines. First, we have Viv, who is a young woman who has gone missing since 1982. And then we have Carly, who is Viv's niece, who returns back to the motel where her aunt has gone missing to figure out what has happened to her. I really like the personal connection between Viv and Carly because it does bring about the concept of history repeating itself. Both of them end up in a quite similar situation in both timelines because they both have the same job of being a receptionist at a late night hotel. The mystery in Viv's point of view is following the unsolved murder cases of three women and meanwhile Carly is going back and retracing her aunt's footsteps. I enjoyed how both characters are quite strong female characters and they are not unreliable narrators that we sometimes see a lot in thrillers or murder mysteries. Also, being set at an old creepy hotel, the setting was perfect. We also have a little bit supernatural kind of things going on with ghosts being quite creepy but the thing is the ghosts were surprisingly helpful to our characters and i really like that part also personally the creepiness of this book is not for me and i absolutely despise horror movies but for this book i think it was really well done and executed my next book is all these bodies by kendart blake this one is a ya horror mystery blend that takes you through a journey of what is the truth and what may be lurking in the dark set in the 1950s set in a small town we're following the son of a sheriff michael jensen and with michael he is quite determined to solve this new murder mystery in his town and it involves a mysterious young teenage girl and there's something off about this girl, something odd but intriguing for Michael and the readers. And her name is Marie Catherine Hale. And where we first find Marie is she is in the center of a crime scene where the bodies of a young family is found lying on their living room floor. And their bodies are drained completely of blood while Marie is just standing in the middle of their living room covered head to toe in blood and it seems that this murder mystery case is part of a serial killer's doing but usually that serial killer's victims are found all murdered but in this case the young toddler girl was left untouched and alive this book was quite a thrilling ride because we're falling from the point of view of michael jensen who is trying to investigate clues and get down to what actually happened to these people and of course the top suspect is Marie and while reading this book in the back of my mind I was wondering if Marie is even human or that she has someone else helping her. Although the plot might be a little bit slower paced but I feel like it fit with the theme of a murder investigation done in a small town being slow paced but even with that we do get our answers at the end of the book and it was quite a satisfying conclusion and quite creepy for this spooky season. And my last book on this list is Final Girls by Riley Sager. This one is a faster paced read and it's like a slasher movie in book form. The term Final Girls is when there is a lone survivor of massive killer events um, and we follow three main final girls in this book. But we are following the point of view of Quincy Carpenter, who is a final girl and a survivor of a massacre that killed all of her sorority sisters, including her boyfriend. Now in present day, it's been nearly 10 years since that massacre. Quincy is now living with her lawyer boyfriend and she runs a quite successful baking blog. But things aren't completely healed for Quincy because she doesn't remember major events that happened that night. So we might have an unreliable narrator and we don't know what happened at that massacre at the night at Pine Cottage and that premise really did keep me reading and I believe I read this book in one sitting. It was so addictive to just finish this book right off. And it also did make me wonder if Quincy was the one to assist in helping kill her friends. 
but there were quite a couple of red herrings that got me and overall the mystery and the slasher elements were thoroughly entertaining and it really did keep me up at night to just finish this book. I believe that's all the books I have to recommend for this video and I hope you may have added one or two to your TBR. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and also ring the bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!